Hello, dear friends. It's Carly Wharton, and welcome back to Owning Authenticity. Uh, in this series of videos, we set upon a quest to understand and simplify our natal chart. Natal charts hold a depth and wealth of self-empowering information. And in this video series, I invite you to Take some time and invest some time in yourself and understand your unique cosmic signature. So anytime I, I bring out a new tool that is very close to my heart, I like to start in this place of the art of studying self. So there are a lot of people out there who charge you money to take you on a personal development journey. I am such a practitioner. I do this as well. You can pay me to take you through sessions and we will unpack the joys of who you are together. And it's possible to do this on your own at home for free. You know, working through the bits and pieces of who you are, it simply takes pointing your awareness in that direction. And the natal chart is a great place to do that. So I always love this quote, give a man a fish and he eats for a day, teach a man to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. So it's like that. It's like, I want to teach you how to read your natal chart, not just interpret it for you so that, you know, really truly digesting your entire natal chart with all of the depth and connections that are possible to look into, um, that takes like years and can get rather expensive if you're paying somebody to guide you through that. But at a certain point, like if you have the skill yourself, it's just a matter of taking the time to do the research. So your time, you know, is going to pass either way. And I look at natal charts like one more hobby that feels like a win, win, win way to spend my time. So when you very first look at a natal chart report, I get this uh, style of report from astro.com. You can find your report for free. Also, uh, there are, I already have a video on pulling your natal chart for free. So if you don't have a copy of your personal natal chart yet, uh, I'll put a link to that video in the description so you can get your personal chart. All you need is your birth date, the location, and the time, preferably, that you were born. And so in this series of videos, Simplifying Natal Charts, my goal is to teach you how to read all of the different pieces of what you see here on the screen. And that is obviously not going to fit in this very first introductory kickoff video. Uh, but just to let you know, this is, you know, give yourself a few, a few months of digesting one bite of information at a time. And soon when you look at this, it'll make total sense. So for this video, I would like to start in a place a little bit more general with one of my most favorite astrological truths uh, that I have so enjoyed learning on this natal chart journey. And that is that we are all, all 12 of the zodiac energies. So in pop astrology, we are very familiar with our sun signs and our where the sun was at the time of our birth and we think you know i'm that one sign i'm a gemini or i'm a capricorn and in truth we are all all 12 of the zodiac energies and when you very first learn that i'll bet you you have at least one zodiac sign that you're like, no, I'm not. I'm not that. I am not a Virgo. I am not a Pisces. I am not a Cancer. Whatever it is that you got a beef with one of these, one of these zodiac signs and learning that that zodiac energy actually exists inside of you too can be an interesting part of the process to work through, but so crucial to just kind of open ourselves up and open up our awareness to say that we are multifaceted beings in no way, shape, or form would we ever be so one-dimensional as to only be represented by one out of the 12 zodiac signs. The 12 zodiac archetypes form a spectrum that creates a wholeness 
there's a wholeness because all of the different archetypes bring something different. They all have different superpowers and strengths and brilliances. Um, and then with all of those skills that they possess, they naturally are limited in certain areas. And in the area where one sign is limited, that is a different sign superpower. So it's actually a really empowering thought to think that we possess all 12 of them. Meaning if you've ever had the thought, oh, I wish I could assert myself like an Aries. Well, you can. And I'm, I'm sharing that as an example of something that I have literally said before. And then I found out, oh, wait, I have Aries energy too. Wait, how do I tap into this? So learning that you are all 12 of them is really empowering to figure out how to pull from each of the energies at the time when that particular energy makes the most sense. For example, if it's time for you to assert yourself for your own highest good, yes, Aries is a great energy to tap into. If you're comforting a loved one in a tender situation, your cancer energy is a really good energy to tap into. So each of the different energies serves its own unique purpose. And the more familiar we can be with the fact that we contain them all, we achieve a balance and a harmony where the limitations that we thought were on us are recognized as illusions. They're not real. We, we contain the ability to do far more than we were giving ourselves credit for. And if you'll allow it, your natal chart can open your mind to the fact that you actually possess way more skills and superpowers than you are currently giving yourself credit for. So our cosmic signature, if you've watched any of my simplifying human design videos, you've heard me talk about the cosmic signature, uh, this idea that this moment in time that you made your entry into the world, the planets were arranged in a particular configuration and that configuration, that arrangement becomes the imprint of your unique energy. Your unique energy is a snapshot of the planetary energy at the moment of your birth. And that we call in shorthand our cosmic signature. So on the natal chart wheel, kind of like the human design body graph, if you've watched that material, we get to actually see a picture of how we're wired as unique energetic beings. So just like the human design body graph, the natal chart wheel is a work of art as it brings together this information and allows us to take it in a ton of information in a very small space. So literally, as we look at this wheel, this circle, imagine it is the sky above. So it is, if you were to look up at the moment of your birth and look at the sky, this is what the sky looked like in terms of all of these different symbols. That is the locations of the planet at the moment of your birth. And with that, it is considered to be a map of your cosmic signature. You can also, there are lots of pieces that tell us lots of different things. Every single piece of our chart has its own story. So it's, it's a lot of storytelling, uh, which you know is very fun. There's lots of meat on the bone if you're willing to kind of digest it one bite at a time. Um, but these, these unique placements, it, it is truly unique and it allows us to see how each of us brings something different to the table in terms of, yes, we all possess all 12 of these energies, but we are prioritizing certain energies over others. Like if you have a whole lot of planets in Gemini, like the chart on the screen, you're favoring that Gemini energy and you're using it more often than say Libra, where there's no planets falling in Libra. So it's like that, but that doesn't mean that Libra energy is not still present. It is, it's just not your favorite. Like imagine being right-handed or left-handed, when you go to pick up a pen, your dominant hand knows which hand is gonna pick up the pen to do something with it. The non-dominant hand knows not to reach for it because it's not gonna get to pick it up. 
But that doesn't mean that if you did, if you did actually hand the pen to your non-dominant hand and let it write something, it could probably write something. So it's a little bit like that. It's a little bit like that. Like, like your dominant hand, your dominant zodiac signs. And I say signs because you see, like, even on this chart, there's several planets in Gemini. There's, there's several things um, going on up at the top of the chart, kind of clustered together. So there are dominant signs, multiple of those within one person. And again, the way that we each bring those energies together creates our unique energetic fingerprint. So on the very outside of the wheel are the zodiac signs. So these are the chunks of the sky that belong to each zodiac sign. And those locations in the sky are archetypes for patterns of energy. So that zodiac, for example, the arrow in this case is pointed at Pisces. Pisces, as far as being a chunk of the sky, it has a set of properties. When planets move through that chunk of the sky, certain things happen to all the planets that go through that area. And so that fog of Pisces, that energy that those planets move through, that fog has an arch it's an archetypal story of what Pisces energy is, what it feels like. And likewise, the planets, so the symbols along the inside, those are each representing a planet. And those are also archetypes for patterns of energy because each of those planets has its own energetic personality. So just like the, the certain section of the sky that when planets move through that section of the sky, there is a certain result on the planet's energy the planet itself already has its own energy and each of the different symbols that you see are influencing the energetic mixture in a different way. So just by having one planet in a certain sign, that doesn't necessarily mean the same as like somebody else who has a different planet in that sign. It could manifest itself completely differently. It depends on which planet it is because they all have their own temperament, they all have their own agenda, they all have their own dominant influence and their purpose for interacting with us. So it's it's a beautiful story when you really start to understand all of these different archetypes and the way that they come together and we are each weaving such intricate tapestries of energy. And it just happens, like it's, it's just part of the imprint process when we get here and then we carry this energy for the rest of our lives. And so many of us don't understand our unique energy and we fight against it and we beat ourselves up for it and we compare ourselves to other people who are more like who we think we should be. And it can be an agonizing process to work against yourself. And these natal chart energies can help us to understand how how can we work with our energy instead of against it? And natal, this word, this was new to me. I did not know the word natal. I, I have no children, obviously, um, but it just means birth. It's associated with birth. So when we're talking about natal charts, it's a chart of the sky at the time of your birth. That's what a natal chart is. And within charts or zodiac charts, there are lots of different kinds of charts. Uh, that are even above and beyond the natal chart. So we'll get into more of that. That's not necessarily of concern to you right now if you are a true beginner. Uh, just know that natal specifically is at the time of your birth. So that's a good vocab word to have in your back pocket if you're doing any of your own research on Google and reading about things. It's going to want to know, is this one of your natal placements or is it a transit placement? And a natal placement is like this. It's from your natal chart. It's where it was when you were born. A transit placement is current or on a particular date that has nothing to do with may or may not be your birth date. So like I could look at my chart, my natal chart, which is a snapshot of my birth in 1988. And on top of that, I could put the transits, which would be a snapshot of where the planets are now. So there are lots of different ways to slice and dice this information, and I beg of you to chew it up one bite at a time.
that's all we can ever do, right? If you love to learn, I love to say that natal charts are the gift that keeps on giving. You can study your chart for years and still be finding new things in your chart every time you revisit it. I swear every time I open my chart, something new will jump out at me that I'm like, how have I never noticed this before? And then as I read the story of it or do the research into what that particular piece of it means, it's always the perfect time. As, as we're drawn to study this material, just trust that it is all happening in the perfect time. Anytime you come to it with joy, it is the perfect time. And if it doesn't fit in your life in any season, that's no problem. It's all happening in the perfect time. If your curiosity is piqued, keep watching. And until next time, dear friends, you take good care.